Hello chess fans, welcome to another edition of Chess Chat, a program designed to give you, the viewer, a better understanding and a deeper appreciation of the exciting world of chess. I am your host, George Marijanian, Program Director of the Wachusa Chess Club at Fitchburg State College. This club meets every Wednesday evening from 7 to 11 in room C188 of the McKay Campus School at the college. And with me, once again, is my longtime colleague and co-host, Martin Lane of Lunenburg, one of the strongest and most active chess players in North Central Massachusetts. Welcome, Marty. Hello, George. Good to see you again. Always a pleasure seeing you, Marty. Marty, today we're going to focus our attention on a chess player who was the world champion longer than any other player in the history of the game. And his name, Emmanuel Lasker. Now, what do you know about Emmanuel Lasker? Well, as you say, he's, he was the longest reigning world champion we've ever had. Um, Here he's he, also here's a picture here's of him. A picture of Lasker. He's all, he was known for his cigars. He, he loves smoking. Yes, he, he cigars and cigarettes. While he played in those days, you could smoke while you played. Yes, you can't do it nowadays. No, no, no it's forbidden. But um, and again, he's one of our one of our more colorful figures in chess. He was a mathematician by profession, and in fact, he was even more interested in math than he was in chess. He he was respond. He wrote a textbook that was a a standard manual in algebra, for instance. Yes, right. Um, but he was also a great chess theoretician. Wrote a couple of important books in chess. Um, and in fact, here is one of his uh, books, uh, Lasker's Manual of Chess, which he wrote in 1927. This is a classic book. Every serious chess player should uh, acquire a, a copy right. of this book. Uh, and he wrote also another book earlier called Common okay. Sense in, in Chess. In fact, that was the first chess book I ever saw. Common Sense in Chess? Mm -hmm. two, gr two very good books on right. chess Yeah, that Lasker wrote. Now, he was born in Germany. He was actually born in uh, a place called Berlin, in Germany. Not to be confused with Berlin. No, nothing no. with Berlin. Right. Although he spent time in Berlin, right. Germany. Uh, he, but he was born in uh, uh, December 24th. Chris it was actually yeah. the day before Christmas, 1868, in uh, Berlin, in Germany. It's now Poland. It was annexed to Poland after the Second World War. It's, uh, it's Berlinic, Berlinic, Poland. And he lived there. And then at the age of 11, he was sent to Berlin, Germany, to stay with his brother Bertolt right. when he was 11, as I say. And his brother Bertolt taught him chess at right. the age of 11. His brother was an accomplished player. Oh, his, his brother was a, was a chess master, a German yeah. master uh, already. Uh, and so in Berlin, actually, uh, uh, he studied mathematics, but he also engaged in chess, playing chess, and really improved. And he became a master. Actually, Lasker became a, a German chess master when he was 20 years old. Uh, but uh, he, in 1894, let's, let's, bring, let's bring it up to 1894, he was able to come over to the United States. Wilhelm Steinitz was the world champion. Here is actually a, a picture of uh, Lasker at, from 1899. Right. Uh, this is how he looked. Uh, but eight, five years prior to this taking of this photo, he came to the United States and he challenged the reigning world champion, Wilhelm Steinitz, to a, a title match. And they played the match. It was a 19-game match. It was played in New York, Philadelphia, and Montreal, Canada. Right. And it ended in victory for Lasker. He, he dis dethroned Steinitz as world champion in May of 1894. And then, five years later, the game we're going to present to our viewers is a game that he played against one of the toughest players, one of the top players of that period, Karl Schlechter, right. who was a master. Here's a picture of Karl Schlechter on the left, seated on the left, playing Lasker in their world championship match that they played in 1910. This, actually, this month, January 2010, is the 100th anniversary of that match. Right. So, but the game we're going to present is a game that Lasker, who's pictured here on the right, played against Schlechter in a tournament in 1899 in London, and Lasker won that tournament. In fact, uh, he played, you know, we, we discussed Harry Nelson Pillsbury. Pillsbury right. Well, Pillsbury won the, the great Hastings Tournament in England in 1895. Right. Well, later that year, Lasker won a major tournament in St. Petersburg, Russia. 1890, it was the end of 1895, the beginning of 1896. Then he went on to win a tournament in Nuremberg, Germany in 1896. Then in London, a big, in fact, it was, it was probably a, 
the strongest chess tournament ever on British soil up to that time uh, that he won in, in London. And then the following year, 1900, he won a major tournament in Paris. So he won four major tournaments uh, uh, during his career. And he, again, he won the world championship from Steinitz in 1894, and he held that title until 1921, when he was dethroned by this Cuban. This is Capablanca. Okay. The, here's a picture of the, per, the person on the left is Jose Raul Capablanca, who, who defeated him in the match that was played in Havana, Cuba. And, 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 uh, and Lasker, well, he, at the time he gave some excuses like, you know, it was the weather, they were playing yeah. during the summer, summer. he was uh, 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 you know, not familiar with the tropical climate, you know. Right. So he did, pose, he did express some, you know, some excuses why he lost. But the fact that he reigned as world champion for 27 years, no one's going to break, break that record, Marty. I, I don't see that ever happening, you know, uh, now or, or, or in the future. So, Carl Schlechter is the person we're going to, uh, the game that he played in 1899. Right. We might as well get into the game, and then if we have time later, we'll talk a little more about well, Lasker. Yeah, and Schlechter, we should say, he's from, from Vienna, one of the right. Viennese, Viennese masters who were right. the top players of their time. He was a real center of chess. Yes. And he's kind of a tragic figure. Um, he died right after World War, and he starved to death. Yes, he, he did. There, Pardon, was a fam, the there was a famine after World War One, and, and he, he starved. But he... Um, he was known as being a highly defensive player. He rarely lost. He tended to draw all the time. He had a high percentage of draws. Right. Yes. And this, and the reason that we're showing, we probably should explain the reason that we're showing this game from 1899, is that of that World Championship match, all the games were over 40 moves long. We should have started a half an hour ago if we wanted to go through That's true. any one of those games. They were long, hard-fought games right through to the end. And this is a rare game, uh, right. that as far as yeah. in length, it's being one of the only two under 30 moves. Exactly. And, and as far as getting back to that World Championship match of 1910, that was a match uh, which ended in a tie. It was a, right. a 10 game. It, it, it was originally yeah. scheduled for a 30 game match. Right. But because of financial uh, uh, conditions. They had trouble it, getting sponsors. They had yeah. difficulty getting sponsors, so they had to reduce the, the number of games to 10. And Schlechter. Going into the tenth and final game, was leading by a point. Had a, it was one game advantage. Right. Right. All he had to do in the last game of that match was to draw. draw. And the because claim, the stipulation was, if it was a drawn match, then Lasker would retain his title. And that's what he did. Right. You're right. The, the arbiter declared him retaining the title when when the the game. W w you know, w uh, he, he lost the game. Right. That, all he had to do was draw. Schlechter had to draw. And what was interesting is. Uh, the sources I have r read say that Schlechter actually had uh, opportunities to win, to win the game, win at, diff the game. at different points in the game, but he took risky continuations, right. and instead of playing it safe and going for a draw, which would have gained him the world title, he chose to, to, to play ris right. risky, riskily and, and lost the game. And one commentator suggested that he purposely chose a risky continuation there because he didn't want to win the world championship on a draw. He wanted to win it on a win. Win a win. Okay. So. Yes, I've heard, yes, I've read that too. Yeah. So let's present to our viewers this game from 1899, the tournament in London, right. the Lasker won. In fact, he won very convincingly. It was a 15-player field. He won by four and a half points, points. ahead of uh, the, the rest of the field. You know. And these were the top players of the time. This was a super, this was a super tournament you know, right. of the time. So, uh, in this game, Schlechter, what did Schlechter have, white well, or black Schlechter, Schlechter is white, Lasker right. is black. All right, so what did Schlechter play for his first move here? Schlechter opens with the, takes the pawn on E2 to E4. We've discussed it many times. Uh, it uh, places a pawn in, in one of the important key center squares. He occupies the center, opens up two critical files, one for the white squared bishop and the other for the queen. And so it's a good, solid, and, and the most popular of the opening moves. Okay. So Lasker, in response to this play, he on his first moves plays e5. He plays pawn on e7 to e5, for the same reason, right. uh, as far as opening up a diagonal for the the, the dark, dark for the dark squared bishop, also for the queen, but also contesting that center. It's a it's a fight over the center right. the, over the center here. Right. All right, so, so it's uh, so select this move. Here. Right. So keeping that in mind. Um, you want to occupy the center, you want to control the center, you also want to develop your pieces, which means getting them out to where you can post them on effective squares. And so, uh, with that in mind, Schlechter takes the knight on g1, 
and plays it to f3. It develops the knight and it attacks black's pawn on e5. All right. So with this pawn attacked on e5, black must do something about protecting that pawn. Right. Uh, uh, and he has different ways to protect, but the most logical way is to develop a piece, to bring a piece into the game and at the same time protect the pawn. So he brings knight on b8 to c6. So knight c6, defending the pawn e5 is his move. Right. So, well, third move coming up for Schlechter. Third move for Schlechter, and what he, what we've talked about in the past, he has the option of developing this bishop to b5, attacking the knight in, in a secondary attack on the pawn. And we, fr we presented we, we, that before. We, it just last, the last program, I yes, think. Yes, and, and it, does this have a name when the bishop goes to b5? Does that actually have a name? In some countries it's called the Spanish game, and in English-speaking countries it's called the uh, Ruy Lopez. Ruy Lopez, okay. Right. So, all right, but he didn't play that. Right. Uh, uh, so... But he did move the bishop. Right, he did move the bishop to another square we've discussed. He played it to c4, which places the bishop on an important diagonal. It attacks the f7 pawn on black side, which is a critical pawn. It's a weak pawn because right. only the king protects that pawn. Okay, so, so this is a very good diagonal to be right. on with right. putting pressure on right this. Right through the center. Right. Yeah, this is a very vulnerable uh, spot. Uh, spot here, this f7 square. All right, right. so in this position, with black to move, there are only two, really two good moves. Uh, if, if we look at the position, we could play the knight on g8 to f6, which comes out and attacks the pawn e4. That's one right. good move. Uh, but the move that Lasker played is the alternative, which is bishop c5. The bishop on f8 right. moves to c5. He, in turn, right. Right. now is right. putting For all the same reasons. Attacking right. the pawn on f2. Right. All right, so, and this has a name. Now right. we have a, a opening that has a name. Right. What, is, what is this known as? Well, again, sometimes it's called the Italian game, um, but it's also known as the Gioco Piano, right? Is which means the uh, slow or the quiet game. Well, yeah, because Gioco in Italian means game, game. and right. Piano no means, means quiet. Soft, quiet, soft okay. game. All right, so uh, it's now Weitzman. Now, what are the, what are the alternatives uh, for White? Does White actually have several well, good moves here? Sure, he can he can develop his other knight. It's a perfectly reasonable move. Gets the gets knight to c three looks really good. Good, yeah. He can play very conservatively and play the pawn to d three. That looks that's look, quite that playable. He could castle. He's ready to castle. Castling early is always good. Puts the king in a safe spot. Centers the rook. Uh, in this case. He chose to play kind of an interesting looking move. He moved the pawn on c2 to c3, which looks a little odd. It, it takes away a key square from the knight. Yes. Uh, and temporarily kind of makes what we call a backward pawn on this d pawn. It's sort of stuck back there. So it, it temporarily looks kind of odd, but it's also a fairly common move. And he played, and that's the move that Schlechter chose. But uh, there has to be a plan. There has, what's the idea? Well, there has to be an idea behind right. the C3. What he's doing is he's, he's planning to use this as a, as a support for an eventual pawn to D4. Okay. So that's the plan. If right, you see C3 plan. taking away the na natural square for the knight, to go to c3, right. then it has to be a, has a spring. It's a spring, yeah. a springboard for right. the the pawn, the d pawn, to move to d4. Right. Okay. So what Laska does in return, on his fourth move, he develops another a new piece. He brings the knight on g8 and plays it to f6. Now this knight attacks the pawn, undefended pawn, on e4. Right. So, All right. so Schlechter. So, so why? Uh, so Schlechter. Um, now a modern player, it's probably more common now to just simply defend that pawn with d3, but it leads, leads to a very quiet, very, you know, both sides will castle, both sides will eventually move their pieces out, and it leads to a very slow, just like the name, Gioco Piano, a very quiet, quiet. game, quiet yes. positional game, no fireworks. Right. Okay. Um, he could castle if he wanted, but he'd have to, he runs the risk of losing the pawn. Right. He might regain it with some counterattack. But what was, what was a little more common at the time that this game was played, the late 19th, early 20th century, is uh, Schlechter chose to play the d2, not to d3, but all the way, just like we spoke about, to d4. Now, he's attacking black's pawn on e5 and the bishop on c5. All right, so it forces black to do something. All right, so this is the classical continuation. Right. Uh, and this is what is recommended uh, when you're playing the c3 continuation, right. is to follow up with d4. All right, so what Lasker does here, he realizes he has a double attack, the bishop is now under attack, but what he does, he exchanges the e pawn. He takes e, captures on d4. So there's a pawn exchange here. Right. 
So what does Schlechter do in return? Well, he doesn't yep. want to give up material yet. Um, he wants, so he's going to recapture the pawn. He take, plays the C pawn, takes the pawn on D4. Now okay. renews the attack on the bishop. Right, because it's defend, this pawn is defended twice, twice with the queen and the knight. It's attacked so twice, but it's defended twice. So the bishop now has to move. Right. Uh, so what the bishop does, instead of retreating the B6, just goes bishop B4, check, attacks the king. Right. All right, so now White has to make a decision. Well, as far yeah, as he has getting to get out of check. Yeah, according to the rules, he has to get out of check. He has to do something about it. Um, the, he could take the bishop on c1 and play it to d2, offering the exchange of the bishops. That, again, leads to a fairly quiet game. Yes. Simplifies. Some players have tried to simply move the king over to f1, but then that makes castling impossible. Exactly. Forfeits white ca forfeits castling. castling. So even though it gets the king out of check, it doesn't really help you out. Right. So yeah. what he does is he takes the other alternative. He takes the knight on b1, blocks the check by moving it to c3. All right. So he's blocked the check with knight c3, and Lasker in turn now uh, will now capture the pawn on e4 with the knight. Knight takes e4, and he can do it because of this pin. Right. This knight cannot recapture on e4 right. because the, uh, the knight is pinned the to the bishop. The pinned. All right. right. So. Um, and he's also, yeah, all right. Now, so he, now he's threatening, and plus now if it was black, he's threat. Black is threatening a kind of difficult combination where he might pick up the exchange. Yes. Or he could pick up an extra piece. Because of the pin and the an exchange there on c3, right. it could get kind of messy. So what uh, Schlechter does is he unpins, he castles, he relieves the knight of being pinned. Now that the king is off to safety, the knight is no longer pinned. And now the black's knight is threatened. All right. So now... Black, Lasker, has to make a decision. He can capture this knight on c3 two ways. He can do with the knight, he, or he can do with the bishop. And what he chooses to do is the better of the two. In fact, knight takes c3 has been played. In fact, it was uh, known, it's known as the Greco variation. Right. It was, uh, coming, the Italians knew this like 400 years ago yeah. that you could play this. But uh, Lasker played a better move, I think, Bishop takes c3. So that's his right. move on his eighth, uh, eighth move there. Right. Bishop takes c3. Three. Now, white could, and a lot of players probably would automatically just recapture right. to keep even. But what Schlechter does is he chooses to now uh, move his pawn on, on d4 to d5. Now he's attacking the knight on c6 and the bishop on c3. So right. now black has to move one of them. All right, so Black has to make a decision. Which piece, he, he, he can't say both. He has two pieces under attack. Right. So he has to decide which piece w does he wish to s retain. Uh, and nowadays, you will see uh, Black actually retreating, the, saving the bishop, retreating the bishop to f6. That is very commonly played. But when this game was played in 1899, what Lasker played said, okay, you can have my bishop if I can move my knight to e5, knight e5, and attack your bishop. Right. So that's what he played. That was in vogue right. back then, in the 1890s. Yeah. Well, it puts, it puts the both knights center, center of them in the, in the... That's true, and right. also... He's it threatening also, to take with check, to right. take and that. There's, there's a lot of complications. He's offering the knight, but of course, right. if the knight takes, the bishop can go back and, and right. recapture. Right. All right, so, so this is an interesting... interesting so now Schlechter, Schlechter needs to recapture the piece. He's, he's already... So now... So B takes C3. B takes C3. All right. So that means that uh, Lasker has to continue with Knight takes C4. All right. So he gets his piece. Right. All right. Now White has to find a way well, to Yeah, because to White regain. is not, right, he's not down White, a piece and a pawn. Right. So what does White do here? He's a piece, he's a, he's a, he, he's well, a piece behind here. Well, but he looks at the position of the Knights. Right. And neither one of them is defended. And by moving the Queen from D1 to D4, he simultaneously attacks both. All right. So one of them is going to go. Okay, so uh, what he does, now he could have one knight defend the other knight. Yeah. Right. But, he cho but Lasker chooses not to do that. May he, let's see what his idea is. What he played here, he played f5. He's willing to give this knight to save this knight on e4. So he plays f5, and that was his move. Now why right. would he play this? But what, what will this allow Schlechter to do? Well, this allows Schlechter... If he chose to, he could, and he did in a later game, he could take the knight on c4 and regain his piece. But what he did in this game was 
Uh, well, if we look at the, he needs to regain a piece, right? And he and can he, regain that, that. He can regain he could, that yes, piece pretty easily, piece. right? Yes. But he's already even not counting the piece that he's given up. He's also given up a pawn. He has his pieces are pretty well placed. He's castled. He's got the board. Black is really not well developed. So he wants to find a way to sustain his attack, his momentum. He okay. doesn't want. He doesn't want. You know, he needs to keep up an attack. So what he does, he, he plays a fairly aggressive looking move. He takes the bishop on c1 and plays it to g5, attacking the queen. All right. Well, now with the queen under attack, uh, he has to do something about this attack on the queen. And he, but, the, but he has the answer. The answer is this knight on e4 now can take the, the bishop on g5. Right. And that's what he plays. Right. It's he only played, defended once. It's only defended it's once, so he plays. So, he, so we're going to see why he played this. Knight ta he has to play this. Right. He has no choice. Uh, so knight takes g5 right. is his move. Yeah. So what, how does Schlechter continue here? Well, again, keeping up with that, that theme that he has to maintain the attack. Now, he can't just take his piece back because that would allow knight take knight opening up the, the king's right position. exactly be, he would still he would still be he would, a piece he would, he would still be a piece behind right. it yes. would be right. awful right so but what he does is he has, he takes the the queen on d4 captures this pawn on g7 now attacking simultaneously attacking the rook and this knight okay so that was his plan to d deflect this knight by, by having it take it on g5 so it couldn't actually uh, defend this f6 right. square so that's going to force the rook only has one move to save itself, and that's to play rook f8. So he plays rook f8. So now the the rook is safe. Right. So how does Schlechter continue here? Well, now he's he's actually down at this point. He's down two pieces. Yes. So now it, you know he, he again he's constantly looking for a way to regain material and maintain his attack. All right. So what so does he, he do? So he plays here? knight on f3 takes g5. All right. Okay. And by the way, uh, okay, it's Black's move. The question: Look at this. This e file is open. The e file is open. The queen is down on the seventh rank. There's a knight down there. All right. So what Laska has to do is to try to force the queen. The queen. The queen's off the board here. Uh, and also give the king an escape square if there's any check given on e1 with one, one of the rooks. So what he does, he finds queen. Queen f6 is the move that's uh, going to stop all this. Right. Queen f6. Now. We have the queen attacking and the queen, queen and the uh, knight and the knight. Although the knight is, of course, attacked by the. But what's the poor white queen going to do now? Right. Well, the first thing that um, Schlechter does is again he wants to maintain that um, that momentum. So he's going to take the rook on f1 and play to e1 check. Right. Because there's only one place, there's only one thing the king can do at this Right, point. the king only now has only w one square yeah. to go to. He can't block it with the queen because he'll lose the queen and get mated pretty exactly quickly thereafter. Right. And he can't block with the knight right. because, because the rook could still take the with still the check. Take, yeah, right. So this is, so that, oh, so that is the reason why so this queen went to f6, to give this d8 square an escape okay. square for the king. So the king now moves king d8. All right, so the king is safe here. So how does white continue? Black is well, still attacking this queen. Yeah, this is, this is where... It, I think it, this is where he starts to really run into problems because the, the attack starts to run out of steam. He's forced to take the queen on f6. He, there's no way he can maintain that no. attack. And one, in a situation like this, once you start to simplify, the person who's defending starts to be able to, to fight back. It was, right. He's losing his pressure now, but he's forced. There's, no, there's nothing he can do with the queen. There's nothing, no other piece that he can attack with. So this, this he, next he, move is forced. forced. Absolutely forced. So he, has to he take must it. take. Queen right. takes f6. All right, so Alaska just re recaptures. Right. Rook takes f6 right. is his move, his 16th move. Right. So now it's Schlechter's turn. He's still uh, a piece behind here. Right. Yeah. And, you know, when you and I were talking about this game earlier. We looked at the knight taking the pawn on h7, attacking yes. the rook. Right. Um, maybe white could continue to harass. There. There's some threats he might be able to do. He could maybe hold a, a draw, but that's... You know that that's hard to see. It, it's it's complicated, but all right. So what? Some, but what what um, you know, what Schlechter does is he's going to he you know, he's got this open file. The king is really stuck against the king. Two can't pieces. move. These the two king. pieces haven't gone anywhere. Right. And they These can't pieces go anywhere. are dead. So he's yeah. he's, he's undeveloped. Look, yeah. Right. So he's looking for ways to to maintain his pressure. He plays the rook on e1 to e2. Yes. So that preparing to double the rooks. Right. On the on the e file. So okay. Comes. All right, so that gives Laska the opportunity now
to harass this knight. Right. This this pawn this right. pawn the, that could have been captured the, the, with the this pawn knight. That he didn't take. The right. pawn that he didn't take <laughs> now is going to w be used, used against, against him. him. Right. And he plays h six. Right. Now this pawn attacks the knight and right. forces now this and knight. So then now the knight comes down to h seven. Okay, but it but it doesn't but have it did, to. But, but, but it doesn't, doesn't have, have to. to. No, it can st actually can it stay right there? I mean, it can, can actually after h six, you know, can he could can, yeah the rook on he could double, double the uh, the rook on right. He could he could he could double right. because That's by what, doing fact, that what he did right. He's threatening mate. Interesting enough, he can leave that knight there because uh, by doubling the rooks, is he not threatening right. checkmate? He's right. Right. Threatening checkmate. Okay. Right. All right. So that means that to, in order to stop the checkmate. Black has to create an escape, you know, a, a, for the king, an yeah. escape square. And what he does in response to rook ae1 uh, is play c6. Right. So he plays c6, giving c7 square an escape square. Yeah. We okay. should also note that the rook can't come back because he could still checkmate him by... Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, that is, for example, if he brought the, the rook back here, if right. he came here, he couldn't come here to, to uh, c, c, uh, f8 because the knight could, could still, still come, come here and then check yeah. forcing, forcing the knight to, to take capture, on f7 and then the rook comes down down here mates, rook, right. rook here would right. be mate right. all right so, so the rook so rook, c6 is virtually forced right so this is forced all right. right so this is here in this yeah. position all right so so he has to place it that's the, right. in fact this move was forced right yeah. c6 so, to create an escape right. square so then now he comes down rook to e8 check, check. all right so the king has only c7 king c7 is his right. move now yeah. he plays the knight to h7 chasing now he's attacking the rook. rook right. All right, so so now the rook uh, has not too many good squares. What he chooses to do is play rook f7 and attack the knight. Okay. All right, so now the knight so, is attacked. Right. So how does uh, well, well how does uh, how does how does white save his knight? Well, he, he can't go here because it's attacked by the pawn, and he right. can't go there to be taken by the rook. He could come back here. Could go to f8. Yes, could, he could go to f8. Be, be yes. safe. Right, he could but do that. But what Schlechter wants to do is he wants to, he's got his rooks doubled on this E file. Right. Now what he wants to do is he wants to take the opportunity to double on the back rank, on the eighth rank. So he's going to come over and protect the knight with his rook. All right. So now he's protecting the rook and allowing now for this other right. rook on E1 to come down and double. All right. We, Lasker has to do something about uh, allowing th this bishop to come out into play right. here. He pl what he plays is b5. He plays right. the pawn on b7, b5. b7. to b5. Right. So, so, all right. So now, so now what does... comes down, he doubles those rooks on the on all eighth right. rank. Okay. So what Lasker does here, he just simply, well, he must have he had to give this thought though. He plays bishop b7. The bishop is protecting the rook, but of course this rook is now attacked twice. But of course this rook on f7 is attacking the knight. The knight right. All right. So in this position, Schlechter resigned. resigned. Now why? If we follow it's through, true. it's Schlechter's move. Why can he not? Why does he not continue here? Let's let's look at this very closely on the position. Let's look at it's Schlechter's move. move. He resigned right. here, but he chose not to play. Rook takes a8. Why not? Because we have. Bishop takes a8, and then if this rook, rook takes, takes on a8, eight. we have simply rook, rook takes, takes h7 here. Right. Then we have rook takes a, h, a7 check. check. Now, wh where is this king going? Well, the king actually has one good square that's going right. to cause lots of problems, mm -hmm. and it's not up here to no. b6. No. It's, it's right to here. Yeah. It's actually to b8. Eight. Forcing the rook to only one square, a6, and then and now king d7, and this rook, rook is trapped. Lost. Right, because all, right. all these squares. All right, so this game ends, uh, he resigned after 22 moves. This is a game played in London, a uh, major tournament that uh, Emmanuel Lasker won in 1899, and he held the world championship from 1894 to 1921. We hope you, as chess chat viewers, enjoyed this, uh, this game, and next time we'll present you another interesting game for the world of chess. See you next time on Chess Chat.